Welcome to the tying and trimming of a Game Changer Fly. It's a platform that's become increasingly popular since Blaine Chocolate's release of his new book, Game Changer. Let's dive into the materials. I like to use GSP thread, uh, 100 is my preferred, some UV resin, some Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, it's nail polish, the UV light to cure your resin, of course, some sort of toothbrush or brush, a bodkin, a whip finisher, some scissors of multiple sizes, nail clippers for your brushes, lead-free wire for keel weight, and you'll need some dubbing brushes. You can make these yourself, buy them commercially. I prefer a kind of short, stout hook with a wide hook gap. I'm gonna use Kona, Big Game Hunters. I'm also exploring some A-Rex hooks now too. These are all the additional materials that I forgot to add, of course. Let's dive into it. I'm gonna be starting with a tail shank. You can just use a small shank if you don't have a tail shank, but I just make these myself to fit my own needs. I'm gonna be adding down a pretty heavy thread base of GSP thread and adding my Sally Hansons to it. You'll notice that I added Sally Hansons to every single thread base that I have. I feel like it really secures um, my ties a lot more. I'm using mop tail material for the tail of this fly. It's just from a simple cleaning product. You can find some information about it online or comment with any questions. Uh, once I tie that in, I'm going to secure it with my thread and some Sally Hansons. Can't make it too strong. And then I'm going to tie in my dubbing brush. Once it's securely tied in, I'm gonna end with my thread near the eye of the shank. And I'm gonna start wrapping underneath and away from me. I'm brushing multiple times for each wrap. I think this is probably the most important part of the entire process, in my opinion, is making sure that you're not trapping fibers. Um, you'll see lots of prompts for that in the video, but uh, it's very easy to forget and get ahead of yourself. I think it's really, really important to take your time, though. So you'll notice that I'm wrapping evenly with what's called touching wraps. Um, ideally, each part of my brush is laying right next to uh, the part of my brush that was just put down before. Continuing to wrap, continuing to brush until I get close to the eye. At the eye, you'll notice that I stop with the brush facing me or close to me, and then I'm filtering through all these different materials on the brush until I can just find the wire underneath. At this point, I'm going to cord up my thread by spinning it clockwise. It's going to strengthen my thread a bit. And then I'm going to wrap over one time, clean up the eye, and then make three wraps once again over the brush. This is just my process. There's many ways to do it. Uh, I find it works well for me though. A few more wraps to secure, and then a five turn whip finish is what I typically do. At this point, I'm going to use my nail clippers to clip off my brush. Sometimes it takes me a minute because these are pretty dull at this point and then I'm just gonna cut my thread. Use some UV resin, please cure it for longer than I do in the video, and just cut it short for time's sake. On to the next shank. The next one is going to be a 10 millimeter shank, roughly. I make all my own shanks and don't really measure them, but that's close enough. I'm now gonna repeat the same process. It's a pretty repetitive fly once you get used to it. Uh, once the basics are down, you really know how to tie any size. You just kind of adjust the shank and the brush size. So I'm tying in my thread base, some sallies, tying in my brush, and we wrap again. With the video sped up, you can really see the amount that I'm brushing relative to the amount I'm wrapping. Please really take your time to separate your fibers on your brush and tie in the wire part of the brush. It's gonna make really clean tie-offs. At this point, I'm gonna whip finish, cut my brush, cut my thread, or vice versa. Use that UV resin, cure it for longer than I do in the video, and then you're on to the next shank. Once again, going to be using another roughly 10 millimeter shank. I'm going to secure that in my vise very well. And then we start laying down our thread base, cutting it, sallies, and then we tie in the brush. I would imagine that by now you're starting to understand the process. It's fairly straightforward. Putting down a thread base, we're going in using some sallies, tying in the brush itself, wrapping the brush while brushing the brush. That's a funny thing to say and then we'll be tying the brush back in at the other end of the shank. Same thing the entire way up the fly. I think game changers have a reputation for being difficult to tie, but I don't know that I quite agree with that. I think the trimming process can be one of the more daunting processes of this. The tying part is pretty straightforward. 
try to be intentional about making clean tie-offs. This is going to really make a difference when it comes to the movement of your fly. If you have excess material or really unclean tie-offs that are bulky, it could start to impede the movement between the different shanks of the fly. So take your time while you're tying to do it right. Now we're going to tie in our 15 millimeter shank. Once again, thread base, sallies, tie your brush in, brush the brush well, wrap it all the way around, all the way up to the eye of the shank yet again. Some people may be wondering why I'm not trimming as I go. It's a very common technique. In fact, Blaine Chocolate, the inventor of the Game Changer platform, recommends trimming as you go. I did that for quite some time. In fact, probably the first year or so of tying changers. Yet I found that for me personally, it ended up taking me more time for the same product that I would have if I trimmed all at the end. I don't really believe there's a right or wrong way to do it. It's simply something that just works better for you or works better for me. One large advantage to tying the entire fly and then trimming the entire fly is that it allows me to do things in stages. So if I wanted to tie five changers, I could go in and tie all five and then trim all five. I find personally that repetition of the same action allows for maximum efficiency. Building muscle memory and having something become a little bit mindless is not a bad thing in my opinion. This allows you to really get in your groove or get in your rhythm and work as efficiently as possible. We're rounding out the last portion of our shanks. We've got a tail shank, two roughly 10 millimeter shanks, two roughly 15 millimeter shanks, and then we'll be moving on to the hook. The hook is gonna have a few different steps, but overall it's pretty much the same process. I use my vise to mash my barbs on all my hooks. This is just a personal preference. I secure my hook in the vise, make sure it's in there pretty well. Then I wrap on some lead-free wire. My preferred size is 0 0.025 or 0 0.030. Uh, it's pretty heavy lead and I'm gonna wrap it around as tightly as I can and then I'm gonna be sliding it down the bend of the hook. You don't want it to be too much on the shank and you also don't want it to be too far down so I find that my vise is able to stop the lead where it should be. You'll have to figure this out a little bit on your own to find what works best for you. The purpose of this lead-free wire is to help keel the hook and keel the fly. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this concept, it basically is helping the orientation of the fly within the water. Ideally, you want your fly to be riding correctly in the water. You don't want it to be riding on its side or upside down most of the time. And so this weight on the hook bend allows it to ride a little bit more true in the water. As you notice, you use some UV resin to secure that weight at the back of the hook. Uh, you can also use super glue, that works just fine. Laying down a thread base, putting some satellites, of course, you know me, and then I'm adding some connecting wire or some nylon coated leader. Uh, this is around 20 pounds, I believe. I've used anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds. Um, I would up the wire size if I've got a trailing hook, but on this fly, of course, I do not. You'll notice I tied this connecting wire a little bit down the bend of the hook. This allows my previous articulated shanks to be in line with my hook shank. I'm then gonna thread on the game changer body that we've tied thus far and secure our connecting wire back down. I'll bring my thread back up to the eye of the fly and I'll bend back those extra wire sections and tie those back in as well. This doesn't have to be super pretty, just need to make sure it's all secured well. I lay down another little coat of Sally Hansen's on top and then I'm tying in my brush. If you make your own brushes or if you're purchasing brushes, I prefer to have my widest brush at this point on the fly. This allows the longer fibers to go back and cover up the gap between the hook and the shanks. I've noticed that on my flies and many other people's flies, the gap between the hook and the previous shanks tends to be the largest space that you see on the fly. So anything you can do to kind of cover that up while still allowing movement is going to be good. Then we're continuing our wraps and our brushes forward. I'm focusing on density as much as possible, so I'm trying to make my wraps as close as they can be, and I'm really trying to brush out all the fibers to avoid any trapped material. Anytime we do trap material, we're losing some of that density. We're also making it a little bit bulky underneath. And when we go to trim, we might notice that there are spots that look a little bit more bold than others, or not have an even density all the way around the fly. We're coming around to the final section here where we really need to focus on making a clean tie off. Spread your materials out very well on your brush so that you're able to make it to the wire. Cord up your thread. Once again, this is spinning the various particles of the thread to make it a little bit stronger. Make some wraps over the brush. 
and then tighten down. I then am preening back all the fibers, making a few solid turns, and then whip finishing at the very end. Having a clean tie off both looks good and allows you to trim a little bit easier down the road. I'm clipping off my brush once again, and then of course we'll finish with a little bit of UV resin. Really take your time using UV resin or head cement at this point. You don't want anything to really spread between those front fibers. They should be trimming very close to them and it could make the trimming section quite a bit harder. You'll notice I start by securing my fly in the vise backwards from where it was before. So the hook eye is facing the opposite direction it was previously. With the fly up and down, I use my large scissors and I start to make cuts down the fly, making it look a little bit like a carrot. I rotate my vise and rotate the orientation of my fly so that I'm able to trim on the same side every time. I find this just helps me with consistency. As you can see, I'm going all the way around, making my fly a little bit boxy at this point. I find making it boxy and then trimming the corners can help quite a bit. From the time you pick up your scissors, remember the general shape of a bait fish or any fish in general. The tail is going to typically be near the thinnest and the head tends to be the widest. So when you're making these cuts, please keep that in mind. It's really easy to trim a little too far too quick. Once I've made the rough cuts, I grab some other smaller scissors. These are four and a half inch hair scissors, which I would not recommend, honestly, but it's what I had in front of me. As you can tell, I'm continuously adjusting the orientation of my vise to then change the orientation of my fly. Once I've given a rough trim to most of the fly, I take it out of the vise and work on the head a little bit. A big part that I used to really mess up is not leaving enough of a hook gap for the fish to be hooked. Yes, the material is a little bit squishy. I came from conventional fishing where we use soft plastics where the hook was buried. Yet for a variety of reasons, I've found that an exposed hook leads to better hookups. At this point, I'm securing the eye of the hook into the vise, which allows me to get to most parts of the fly fairly easily. It's a bit strange, but it works. Once again, rotating my vise around, allowing me to trim and get a more effective shape. I do take my time to trim within the vise so that I can pull my fly by the tail and keep it straight. If I'm trimming by hand, I tend to bend it a certain direction or have the fly move and make some ineffective cuts. There's nothing wrong with fishing it as is. It's a little bit rough around the edges, but it'll work just fine. I tend to be a little bit more picky though and like to take my time and clean it up a bit more. At this point, at least for the sake of the video, we're pretty much done. I'll continue to trim up small hairs as I see them. Obviously there are some little fluffs around that you see. So we ended up with around a four and a half inch game changer. Notice kind of the shape of the head, teardrop or arrowhead shape usually. I like to have uh, clean joints in between so that I have good movement and a nice taper from the tail up to the head. On to my personal least favorite part, attaching eyes. I use a gel super glue to put on the back of each eye and just kind of dab it on where I want it try to make them line up. Uh, it's easy to make them kind of cross-eyed looking or have one eye that's higher than the other. I don't know that it makes too much difference. I recommend using UV Thick or UV Flex if you have it. it tends to be the best that I've found to attach eyes. You can use your bodkin to uh, apply this as needed. I tend to let it sit for a second to kind of smooth itself out naturally before I would go in and cure it with the light. During the tying and trimming of this fly, my Loon Infinity Light came, so here we are using it for the first time. So far so good, I like it, uh, I think I'll keep it. At this point, we're done. Here's a couple shots of it.